Hi, good afternoon, Corey Thorne, the spiritual healer, coming in to do my monthly channel messages that I have not done in March, uh, trying to get them done for this month so that I can um, start getting some information back out there to you guys. It's been a very weird kind of energy. It's a different kind of energy and um, I can't bullshit people. <laughs> I can't bullshit you. So I, I have to say that, um, and I'm an Aries and that's the first sign I'm doing is Aries. Excuse me. We are in Aries season. So, um, I, I can't let my ego in to just show up with something, just to pull cards and have a message that means nothing. And so as I start channeling through, I start asking, is it ready? Is it ready? And so Today, I heard that it is ready. We are we're ready to download some messages for those born under each and every sign of the Zodiac. And so I hope these forecast readings resonate with you. They are channeled. I channel through the energy of those born under each sign. So this will be for Aries. I do use cards for validation. Today, I'm using my own deck of Oracle cards. And I'm also using Bradley Valentine's deck. So this is my deck, which is not the, it's not, the, this is the beta test, but this is not what they look exactly like right now. So this is the Everyday Goddess Oracle cards. The box cover is on the wall behind us, and that's they're in beta testing. They're not ready to go to print yet. Um, and then I also am using Radley Valentine's The Angel Wisdom Tarot. This is not mine. This is theirs, and his illustrator is Dan Craig. And so mine is Amelia Richard. And the amazing Amelia Richard is the artist who, who took my channeled sketches and turned them into amazing artwork, which I couldn't do. So this is the beauty of this. So today, as we go through, we're gonna do each and every one. This is for Aries. We're starting with Aries. So for Aries, um, we are coming up into the new moon. You are midway through your sign. We're almost, we're soon gonna be leaving Aries season, which is very sad to have to leave. Aries has a lot of power, a lot of strength, a lot of like, let's get things done energy. And, um, and we've been going through a lot of like, um, like a lot of lower vibrating energy for the Aries. So as I start looking further into it, I keep seeing yellow and I'm like yellow. Why do I have yellow? But I guess, you know, when you look at the flames, if you look into a fire, when a fire is burning at night, a campfire or anything, you can see all of these colors that radiate. And so the hotter, the more, the more things start to burn, the more we start to burn away the past, the more things start to burn away and the hotter the fire gets and the closer you get to your truth, the more that you start to see, you know, these multi colors, but you're not really questioning. So for Aries, there's a whole lot of burning away that's been happening. The Easter weekend really truly was a time of of death, of letting old things die. It was the resurrection. It was the rise again. It was in this energy of seeing where you have been, what you have been through, what you've experienced, and to be able to come forth in this new energy into who you, who you are on the other side. So there's a lot of who you are on the other side energy that's coming up for us. And so your card that comes out from my deck is Purity. So you are at a wholeness and it doesn't mean that you've conquered the world. It doesn't mean that you know it all. It doesn't mean that you've got all of that down. I don't know why my camera is, sorry, <laughs> why is my camera looking like that? Um, my picture is not very clear. And so I don't know what's going on, but this is the rebirth and it's purity. And this is like in our purest of forms, it is in the stillness, it's in the silence. So it's that after, you know, after you give birth to a new idea, a new thought or a new you, and this is very much like, it's like flashing sign. This is the new you. You're seeing the new you unfold. You're seeing you become you. And so in that energy, what I'm picking up is, is the sense of um, allowing yourself to sit and just breathe through everything that you've been through. When I go back to that yellow, when I go back to that yellow, I keep seeing to that fire, that burn away, is that that is our connection to our Christ-like, that God consciousness, that that golden essence of us. And most of my logos and my work really ties around pink, rose, rose gold. And I talk about rose and gold and a whole lot in my writings. 
And rose gold is the color of blood that spills into the gold. And so it's that blood, sweat, and tears. And if we if we truly allow ourselves to see where where and how the divine. So when we look at those experiences, we look at the women, we look at the women who carried the the burdens, the pain, the the women who got to experience the miracles and the ups and the downs of of the journey through the biblical stories. And I'm like, and forever I'm like, where's the biblical story? Where's where's the women's versions? Where's the women's stories? And and so there was a lot of that kind of frustration, that kind of energy that I didn't realize I actually carried. And I used to always say, you know, I don't think I'm very, I don't think I really um, get very caught up in some of the, some of the feminist stuff of this day and age. Not that I'm not a for feminism, for, for feminism, but I'm like, I don't really feel like I get caught in there but I realized how much I am in there, how much I do have that strong sense, how much I am empowered and living from there. But because Aries is very strong masculine, is that I neglected a whole lot of the feminine. And that's what they're telling you is that you also, whether you're male or female, you're neglecting a whole lot of the feminine side of you for a long time. And even if we look very girly or you act very girly, that's, there's so much more to being feminine to the feminine energy than what you look like. That is the, that's the face. That's the persona. That's the paint you put on. That's the, that's, that's, that's your character that you step into to play the roles of your day. That's what you want to look at. That's our beautiful free will choice to be. I mean, our divine feminine. I mean, the softness, the compassion, the kindness to understand the power of mothering ourselves to know the importance of making sure that you give yourself the balance of, of love that you give other people. And so this is us now sitting in what we have been blessed with. So Aries, you very much have been blessed with a beautiful healing during this first part through this cosmos energy of, of the world that we have out there. And it's been challenging. And there is right now, there's a lot of not good energy out there. Yeah. But it is what it is. It's not yours. What's going on in your world is your world. And you have that. And so you give birth to a new idea. Your job is to now protect this. Your job is to maintain this new you that you've developed. Your job is to stay in alignment of knowing that there's like this eternity that this soul has to return to. Sometimes some of us were here to get our last bit of wisdom and knowledge and not have to return again. Others, we need this to make sure that we become a change in many of the other things. So that golden that we're seeing is like you are like a change agent. Like you are now the agent of change. You're the agent of many things that are to come. But there's this beautiful guiding energy around you. So I have this strong sense of grandmother energy. And it really truly is a powerful grandmother energy. I feel it. I sense it. It's on the back. It's through the back. But I also have a strong sense of our masculine. So I do have like, um, I do have a sense of like much love around us that we're pick that we're feeling, that we're really picking up uh, grandfather energy as well. And so both like you know the, those ancestors of great grandmother, grandmother, grandfather, great grandmother, grandfather, like those type of energies, are really truly empowering us right now to be able to rise into something new within ourselves. And these are, and so these now have, they, they have, these are both mother cards. And so my cards are divided in mother, maiden, and crone. And so this is imperfectly perfect. This is Gemma. She's 14. You know, she's getting to that. She's getting to that point of really starting to recognize that, you know, that preteen stage is gone. She's in the middle uh, of her mother, of that mothery energy of knowing that it's okay to be perfectly imperfect. She don't have to put a face on. And I feel like for Aries, it's that perfection that we sometimes have, that perfection energy. And I feel like you've been really, truly trying to perfect this. And it's funny. I seen this shirt, a shirt of this pattern on somebody today. Oh, uh, Trini, 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 Trinity. She's a make, she's a, a designer on Facebook and she had this shirt on like this today um, or she, her and three other women. So it was three women, all very different women, all wearing the same shirt. And so that shirt and what that represented to me was, see, we can all, have, we can all kind of have some of the same things, 
but we can all wear it differently. So we can all be, we can be similar. We get in this fight. So it's like really stopping to fight to be that unique you to be that so-called unique that you're different than everybody that you got something more special and setting ourselves free of that and just saying you know I'm just going to wear me and if someone else wears that same style that same thought like that same energy then that's that's theirs but it's who you show up as is what you show up as and Aries you're being told this is your month to you know to truly be you Anyone who wants to carbon copy, anyone who wants to be you, anyone who wants to be that energy around you, so freaking be it. They can't be you. And so that, and if you keep trying to be a grandparent or trying to be like a grandparent or trying to be like anyone else, it's not going to work. They're just going to boot you out of that energy because you've given birth to a new you. And because you've given birth to a new you, you have to give yourself time to define that, to find that, to become a part of that to live in that energy and to be you. And that's, and so you are in a total new stage, a new stage. There's a lot of energy here. And so soul connection is the other card and really coming into, you know, looking into your, who you are today from being able to connect to yourself on a much deeper, deeper level to be able to know your worth, to know your value. And it's funny. I just finished saying, I feel like I don't have any gifts left. Like I feel so weird. It feels so weird to not be full of all this other stuff, to be detached from this universal, so much of this universal energy where I just said enough is enough. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to be a part of anything. I don't want to be connected to anything or I don't even want to be any parts of any group. So it's like, I was a member of a, a Reiki association for years. And I'm like, and now it's like, you have to change everything of who you are to fit into these groups to be, so your wording, your spell, like everything has to be. And I'm like, that's everybody in spirituality and in spiritual work got into this work to get away. You know, we, we, we are, we're trying to hold on and maintain that, that part of us, that freedom of us. And we find ourselves the more that the more that the outside or the more that the, these other worlds start to collide into this world, it's more it starts to collide together. You find yourself now being restricted, being told who you can be, what you can be. And that's like, it's been so detrimental to me. So I can't imagine to other Aries in wherever you are that you feel like you're being stuffed into a box, put into a box. And, and that's what it felt like. And I'm like, that's not how we that's not how we set out to heal it. We did the healing work. So you're doing the healing work to allow yourself to be you, to trust this, to trust this. So you're being told to really trust your free will, to really trust your own intuition, your own instincts, to know that you, you have to question. You have to question. You have to question everything. But you're also here now to learn to start to trust. For a lot of Aries, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. We've been in Chiron return or we're still in Chiron, Chiron return. And so there's been a lot of like, um, there's been a lot of mistrust. You recognize that all of your life, there's been trails of stories of hurt, of people wanting to be in your life for the wrong reasons. And it's been everywhere. And so now you're starting to notice, oh, well, maybe I can trust again. Maybe I can trust. And so, yeah, so holding on to you, being true to you, not letting yourself fall away because usually our parents, parents are trying to form us into something and our grandparents are at that stage. They're like, let the kid be whoever they want to be. And that's what the grandchildren are. That's what the grandparents, just be you. Whereas the parents and the and society is trying to condition. And so there's this conditioning self that's been coming up. But we're breaking free of that freedom. And so these are the three cards that came from my deck. And so we have the beautifully Gemma, who's perfectly imperfect. You have the rebirth. And so let me put them in order. So first we're starting with the rebirth. This is something that you've just gone through. You're already through this. So you're in the pause stage of this right now. You are accepting that you are imperfectly perfect, that you have your own little, you know, you have your own little gem. You have all of you, you're bringing it home to you and that you're not going to be forming yourself into any conditioning you you're on learning deprogramming you're doing all those things that i talk about more than existing and then ultimately you are this next phase of your journey into the rest of april even going into may is about the soul connection is about allowing yourself to 
feel the sense of who do I need to be to move into my happy place, to be of my happiest. And then I pulled Radley's card and I got five, which is transformation, which also goes very much into this and conflicts with other causal opposing uh, opinions and thoughts, right? So there's just that sense of like, who are you arguing with? Whose reflection are you looking into? And, um, and that you truly have to know that you, there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of like stuff that's being slung at you, people's thoughts, people's, people's opinions, and people's like, I just feel like there's some like, like kind of like argumenty type of things, or there's drama and knowing that you can walk away from that. And you may be, the, this may be you with yourself. It may be the enemy within, but I also hear that, um, that you have to stand up for yourself somewhere. So for Aries, you do have the energy coming up saying that there's an area where you have to take a stand for yourself. You have to stand up. So the ambition of an unhealed person or the ambition of somebody who want to be somebody in this world can be very destructive to, to some of us or to some Aries or to, to anybody, actually to anybody. And so that these are, you see it in some of the, you see it in some of the companies that really truly are on the fight to be this so-called new world. And, and you see how willing we are to destroy everything and everything and anybody to get that way you are witnessing it. And you're, and it's almost like the world is trying to say, don't you be silly. It's not happening. It's all in your head. No, it's not. You've got great intuition. You have to trust it. You have to know that truth. And so when we're coming through here is that you're truly taking a stand for you. You are shining the light of your soul reflection because your soul self is speaking to you from the inside out. You know your truth. You knew what it always was. You just got caught in all this other energy. You got stuck there. And Aries, you're, the new you is actually the return to the truth of you before, kind of before you ever got touched by, by humans, when you were only touched by angels. And so the, the whole journey of being touched by spirit, touched by angels, just touched in the light of the Christ-like light, like that's where you are. And so there's, there is an area where you're going to have to take a stand. You're going to have to stand up for you and to be very, to know, you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it. And it's, it's time to protect you and protect what is yours because you've given it all away for so long and you've given away the best parts of you for so long and you've said yes too many times. So Aries, we do have that you're going to have to make a choice, right? And so there's, so with this, so with this card and this decision, you know, there is choices made, you know, you, you have to really, truly, you will have to get clear. So this is like the honeymoon stage of the new you, but you're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to do the down, the down and dirty work that is to come. I feel like that's going to be closer to the end of April for you as you're moving into a new sign, into a new energy. It's like when you come into the next full moon, you're really going to have to shine a light upon the things that you are procrastinating on. I uh, hate to tell you, Aries, we're good at sometimes procrastinating. That's one of our things. Um, and if you look at your Chinese astrology in the year you're born, that might also make some real sense to the energy that you have to give and how much energy that you have to give. So sometimes it's that you, you procrastinate because you are not connected into how much gas is in your tank, how much energy that you have to give to each project, or you're trying to multitask and multitask is not working. You have to stop trying to multitask. And so this is seven, which is a pivotal turning point in your life. Once you start to be able to move past and you start to take that stand, you start to really know what it is that you are clear about and you are clear, that's when you're going to start moving forward. Like really, truly moving forward. And for some here, this card is also representing addictions. And so... Um, that also comes with this, that comes with perfection. So perfection is like, that's trauma response. When we're, when we're trying to perfect things, instead of allowing things, trying to perfect the perfect relationship, the perfect moment, waiting for the perfect opportunity, those type of things. You just sometimes just got to jump and you just have to go and you just have to speak and you just have to do. And so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity here for you as well. There's a lot of there's a lot of change. I feel like there's a lot of up in the air for Aries. And so, um, so they're telling us is that, you know, right now, right now, 
you are getting a heads up on something that is coming for your future, something that is not far away. And I feel like it is really, truly the distractions. And I feel like there's a trickster energy coming in and this is not trickster behind there. This is a beautiful angel that's telling you, wake up. And so that sense of being touched by the angels, like I said, touched by the spirits, touched by the loved ones, touched by that energy is tapping you on the shoulder, telling you to be cautious, to be aware, but to wake up. It is time for you to now to wake up, to start to see that there is magical opportunities that are coming and don't want you to miss them. Don't want you to not be there. If you're waiting for the apples, you know, if you're waiting for the apples, you're, you know, instead of going, accepting the oranges, like you're sad. So you're underneath the orange tree instead of underneath the apple tree. You're not underneath the apple blossoms, right? You're underneath the orange blossoms. And, and so you're, you're looking in that area as well. I didn't get what I want. I didn't, it didn't work out. I failed again. That thought may get in there. But to know that you have to wake up so that you don't miss your opportunities. So you don't miss out on, on achieving something that you need to achieve or the things that you need to be able to do with partner, partnering, partnering. So your angels are tapping you on your shoulder and they're warning you of the trickster energy. And I just feel like some of that trickster energy may be yourself. And it can also be somewhere else. But I just feel like it's like you just don't do well in just this day-to-day -day life. It's like humdrum. And you need excitement. And so here we go. This is how we're ending out. Here we go. This is the sword. It is the queen. of so And our sword is up and out. And she is pointing her way. She is brilliant. She is bright. She doesn't have to look at you. She's looking straight ahead. She's looking into her future. She don't need to look into the eyes of anyone else to know her direction, to know where she needs to go. She knows it. And she also knows where her treasures are hidden. Um, and so she's also really truly knowing that she has to deal with the situations at hand. She's focused on career. I also got in here, um, um, this is could be somebody who's going through a divorce, going through a breakup. Like there's some sort of like, and I feel like this might be where the drama comes in. Is for some, for some of my people in a relationship, you maybe find yourself struggling to hear a breakup of some sort and you're going to be wondering you know is it right is it wrong and it's funny that plant right there i just got that oh you can see it in the picture you can see it over there my daughter just gave me a baby of that plant for my birthday which my birthday is april fool's day and so just like the tarot aries is like the the fool Aries is like the fool in Tarot is what they say, right? And so that's the same thing with zero, right? It's the same type of, and she don't look like no fool, but she's not fool. You know, she's got no one to trick, you know, she's got no one to prove anything to. She's made her choice. She knows who she is. She's owning it and she's taking her time. She don't care what else is happening in the world. She's not looking at the world. She's looking into herself. And so this is truly about now being free. Like she's really freeing herself of everything and she knows her direction she knows what's here she knows what she needs to do she's see that pot right there she's now planted flowers in there because she has brewed everything she has prepared everything is prepared and spirit is the little blue little and i'm not reading radley's book with this <laughs> sorry radley and so the, this little book this little butterfly is really represents spirit is guiding so spirit is guiding you, even if you're going through a challenging situation, even if it is a divorce, a breakup, a loss of something, is that spirit will guide you. You'll know the direction. You'll know where to go. You'll know where you're meant to be. And life is going to challenge us. I feel like in May and June a little bit, I feel like there's some faded experiences that are out of our control. It may be in family. It may be in, you know, something that's coming down the pipe that we don't, that we're not, that we're not getting all the information about right now but it's there it's in the energy and what they're telling us is that we will be strengthened and prepared for whatever is to come so i hope that resonates with you in some way aries have a beautiful rest of april and i will see you in may Bye -bye.